everyone. Welcome back. I saw this comment from Jason asking if he could buy the track from one of my older tutorials. And I realized after a quick search, I had not taken my own advice. After ranting at you lot for not releasing your tracks, it turns out the loop I made for this video never went any further. So because many of you have been asking how to escape the loop, turn loops into full tracks, etc., I thought I would hit the record button and show you what I do to finish this track off. Let's go. Okay, let me introduce you to the track in question. Considering this was only my third video on rhythm, this subject matter might have been a little bit too advanced. <laughs> What I was attempting to teach was something called polymeter, or multiple time signatures. So what we do is we keep the drums as normal on the 16 grid, in 4-4 as it were, but the rest of the elements of the track, we start to mess around with their loop lengths. So here is what we are normally used to, a bar of 16 steps. Nice and simple. But look at this bass part. This bass part is only six sixteenths long. It's not on a one bar loop. It's not even on a half bar loop. It's on six sixteenths. And the next element in the track, this percussive arp synth thing, this loops every seven, every seven sixteenths. Now, the melody. If you thought six and seven was weird, try 31. Yep, that's on a 31 loop. That's the idea. Lots of elements on weird rotations. It's very trippy. Kind of techno. Kind of trance. Kind of house. Let me show you the drop with the sub and the full drums in. the main loop, that is what we're working with. Where do we go from here? So firstly, when we're thinking about arrangement, as with all things, we need to consider the bigger picture. What is our audience? What is appropriate for the track? So for example, I don't think the audience that would enjoy this kind of rolling, trippy vibe would really go for a vocal. Certainly not the type of vocal that would have verses and choruses, that kind of thing. I want them to be lost in the source of the mood, not having to listen to lyrics. An atmospheric one-shot kind of vocal, that might work. I sometimes call this kind of track a roller. The groove is just gonna keep rolling, keep you moving, but it's not a festival banger. They're not going to be bouncing up and down. They're going to be swaying and grooving. So with that vision in mind, we don't want those big EDM build-ups with massive snares. We do have a riser in this track already, but it's subtle. So nothing too over the top. Actually, I can remember the name of one. Let me show you what I would consider an inappropriate riser for this track. Okay, you get the idea? As you can hear, that didn't drop. <laughs> it's a little bit much. So hopefully we're on the same page. Let's try and nail that vibe. So we have a vision. The next thing we need to do is identify our hooks. In other words, what are the key elements of our loop? Let me mute the lead. Okay, still sounding good. 
Let's mute this pace synth. Okay, still working. But if I remove the bass... Nope, now it sounds like an intro or an outro. We've definitely lost one of the core elements. So we can safely call our bass one of the hooks. This percussion synth thing, not so much. Our lead, on the other hand, that's definitely one of the hooks. So there's two hooks to this loop. Ideally though, we would like three because we would like a break from these two at some point. So swapping to a third is the easiest way of doing that. So let's add one more. I can already hear that an ARP is not going to work because our lead synth is basically an ARP already. It's certainly behaving like one. I already have something in mind. What I'm thinking is just simply a chord stab, something quite sporadic. Let's raid the sample folders. In fact, I know there are some good ones in, in the defected pack. I think they're called chord in this pack. Yes, stab chords, here we go, right. Let's check out some of these. Nope. That's close to the mood. Turn these up. Also good. a video. <laughs> that one. Drag that in. yet. Let me turn the release up. That is not C. This is mislabeled. Yep, thought so. It's F and we are in A, so four up. Yep, that's working. Next we need to decide on a rhythm. Let's give this a go. Yes, working, good. First, I'm going to take out some of that low. Sounding a little too thick. Match the mood with some echo and reverb. Verb. Oops, a bit long. Still sticking out, I think it's a little bit bright. Bit of side chain to help 
help it blend even more. Might as well use an actual sidechain of a compressor as opposed to a volume envelope plugin. That way it will disappear when our kick disappears and I don't have to automate it. Play with the mix. Okay. Even less lows. And we're sounding fine. Okay, that's our third element, our third hook. So we want to introduce our hooks one at a time. So our first main arrangement puzzle is if we take this main loop as our first drop, how do we build into it? First simple option, we take out all the low end parts. So no sub, no kick. Simply do this, add the riser. This one, by the way, is a little white noise buildup. The top one is a little transition symbol. Basically a reverse crash into a normal crash. And this one is a big reverb from a clap. Okay, so that's a simple but effective build. We've kept it rolling. Let me show you how I would develop that idea. I want to try a build where we focus the attention just on the lead. So I'm going to mute the bass and the other synth. We're keeping the drums though. Remember our lead is on quite a strange rotation. We don't want people to get too lost, especially this early. So we'll give them a beat for reference. Maybe even a small kick at some point. Here's a classic trick. We're going to run this into a reverb. Sounded pretty good. Let's go again. But also I'm going to do a similar trick with the drums. Run them into a reverb but I'm also going to turn them down. Let's try that small kick. Fade out the kick. Not bad. Let's go again. Okay, something like that. So here's how we get into the first drop. Probably, maybe. <laughs> so next question, what comes after this? By that point in the track, the lead will have been running for the past minute. It would be nice to have a break from that. One common trick is to go down to kick and bass. Pull our 
our symbol over here. Yes. Here is where we introduce the third hook. Good stuff. I like it. We keep this going. Hmm. I didn't mean to leave the kick behind, but that's working. I'm going to run with it. Building tension without the kick. Nice. Let's bring in the lead again. Do the reverb trick on the bass too. That's our last drop. Okay, still needs work. We left the sub in, that wasn't good. to the breakdown. I think we can filter our bass lower. Let's ramp that down, in fact. And we can pull the sub out here. So just reintroducing our elements that we already have. I think we can filter the lead too here. enough. How did that happen? Speaking of filters, because we're not using a sample, I have control over the synths filter and the filter envelope. That makes this pluckier. Also, to differentiate the first drop, we can do a anti-drop. We pull the filter envelope down here. So we're going to build anticipation. We're going to get pretty high, but then pull it right back down. Let's pull the filter down on the base too. I want lots of space on that first drop. Let's fade the pace synth upwards, make more space. Same for the second build. But the last drop isn't an anti-drop, we stay big. Now, something else that you'll find happens often is because our second break is much longer and we've been building for longer, the drop that you used to have no longer cuts it. So we need some extra energy for the last drop. My go-to solution is usually to pick up an extra top loop or two, maybe hi-hats or a ride cymbal. I'm listening for note length. I want long ones. 
I know there are some in uh, Mark Knight. I think this one, if I remember rightly. Not bad. Too short. Pretty good. Yep. Hmm. Last drop's feeling a little short. I'm going to go around one more time. Something like that. So that's your Radio Spotify arrangement done. It's about three minutes long too. That's good. Right, let's have another listen through. While that's playing, I'm going to be working on the outro. I'm just going to use 30 seconds for now. 30 seconds of basic drums. Bass. I can hear this picking up with the extra loop. I think that needs a side chain. Or volume envelope. This section needs a little bit of interest. I'm thinking some kind of automation on the bass, maybe a reverb throw. Oh yes, I almost forgot. We can also build with the filter on the pace synth. Just trying to get this to match the energy of everything else. We need to fade out our bass. While we're here, this is worth mentioning. If you want a DJ to be able to mix your track easily, don't leave your hooks lingering in the outro. Certainly not melodic ones. The audience want to know what is coming next, not what has just been before. So in other words, to be courteous, we leave space for the hooks of the next track. For the intro, however, that's where we introduce our hooks. So I'm going to make sure our upper bass part is pretty obvious quite early on. Fade that in.
this track might deserve a longer intro, a minute maybe, or longer, but for now I'm just going to do a 30 seconds, 16 bars. Let's get some interest into that bass in the break section. Let's open the filter and send into a reverb. to the bass down even more here. We can open the bass filter for the build up too. And let's add some more of those reverb throws to the drop. Not good to work. I need to do that. Yep, that's working. is out for too long there but we can do a longer one at the end to indicate the outro is coming okay that is ready to go after I stop this video recording I'm going to hit render. Yes, I could spend another several hours, even months, tweaking details, maybe adding extra turnarounds or fills, but I promise you'll be chasing that horizon infinitely. <laughs> Let me pass on a golden nugget of advice. One of the ways to finish tracks is to decide that the track is finished. <laughs> Sometimes it really is as simple as that. Anyways, track is done. As always, I hope you learned something. If you did, press some of the buttons that help me out. Or if you really want to help me out, there's a link in the description to buy me a coffee. Leave me any questions in the comments or suggestions. And until I get a sign-off slogan, I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.